How many of you all knew the name of that song? And it was what? I'm too near home, right? I'm too near. You know, uh, uh, some people might say, well, that, uh, that makes a reference to losing your salvation if you turn back. No, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about, folks, uh, we've traveled some miles in this life with the Lord, and it is ever growing closer to the day that we see his sweet face. There ain't no turning back now. We, we, we're going to keep going. You know, we turn back in our lives sometime and, and face another direction, but listen, we've got to keep looking forward. We've got to keep looking to Jesus. And, uh, you know, uh, tonight uh, it works perfect with the message that I have because uh, the title of the message is, Are You Walking with the Lord? It's just a very basic, simple question. And, uh, you know, from the time that you learn to walk, have you ever noticed when babies take their first step, even though they may not completely understand what's going on, they usually have a direction. You know, they're going to mama, they're going to daddy, they're going to somebody that is encouraging them to take steps to walk out. Now, the two most recent ones that I remember, obviously, are Sean and, uh, not Sean, that was 10 years ago, man, he's 10 years old, you know that, is Noah and Alex. You know, you would think if you have three grandsons and they all have four-letter names, it'd be really easy to, to keep up with them, but it doesn't work that way for me. But Noah, he was walking like at 10 months, and he went from stepping to running. Alex, he was not quite that quick. He was uh, like 13 or 14 months, I think, before he started walking. And I want you to know something. I'm not quite sure he's got that thing figured out yet. I love him with my whole heart, and I wouldn't make fun of him for nothing, but he is the clumsiest little fellow that I've ever seen in my life. He trips over nothing. He really does, you know. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what. He'll come up to me and put his hands up. He'll call me. He, did anybody hear him calling me this morning? Oh, man. Tell you, I want to tell you that's sweet sounding to my ears. But um, he'll walk up to me. And he'll put his hands up, and I pick him up, and he'll lay his head on my shoulder. Yeah. He, he, anything he wants. Just like that. You know? But from the time we started walking, when we get up and walk, we think about the direction that we're headed. Okay? Now, I get it. As we start getting older, we may walk in a direction, and when we finally get where we're going, we may have forgot why we went there. Okay? But that really has nothing to do with walking. That just happens to do with forgetfulness and getting older. But when we walk, it, it was interesting tonight, and Brother Buddy made a comment about it in his BTC class, but beforehand, um, we talked about Brother Buddy before, uh, we talked about him, by the way, you know, and he was there while we talked about him, so it was all good, right? And that uh, he, when he walks, he walks with purpose or walks on purpose. Okay, so uh, he, he says, I'm, gonna, I'm going someplace and I'm going to walk like I want to get there, basically. And when we stop and think about that, we use the term walk to mean literally walking, okay, just one foot in front of the other. Uh, we understand that, but walk also is a word that's used in Scripture to refer to the way that we go in our lives uh, and who we follow. And um, so we're going to look at tonight... The question being, um, are you walking with the Lord? And I want you to know something, that walking with the Lord may not always be what appears to be the easiest thing to do. Okay, um, There used to be a song years ago, uh, I don't know it all, uh, even now. It, was, it predated me, so some of our younger people probably won't know it at all, but maybe you've heard it. While strolling with the, through the park one day, in the merry, merry month of May, okay? Or you ever heard the statement about something being easy, like it's like a walk in the park? Okay? So usually when you're walking through a park or something like that, you're thinking about relaxing, you're thinking about the atmosphere around you, you're just, you're just being comfortable, you're just getting out and enjoying uh, the, the area. Well, sometimes walking with the Lord isn't like a walk in the park. It can sometimes get pretty interesting. It can sometimes get even a little worrisome. But we're going to talk about a few things tonight, and we're going to look at a few people that walked with the Lord during the time that he was here. 
And maybe we can put ourselves in these positions and ask, our, ask ourselves. Again, uh, we're talking about walking with purpose or walking on purpose. And uh, uh, Brother Ben made a comment this morning about, uh, you know, God calling us to something in particular and, and following after it. Do we do things intentionally? Okay. So let's think about this in our walk with Jesus. Do we, do we just kind of go through the motions or are we in it for, for the long haul? So, first of all, take your Bibles and turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 14. This is going to be the first passage of Scripture that we look at. We're going to have three, uh, two Scriptures in Matthew, uh, one in Luke and one in John. So we're going to stay in the Gospels because we're talking about walking with Jesus while He was here. And uh, I want you to realize something, that even the disciples found out that sometimes walking with Jesus was not the easiest thing to do. You know, as a matter of fact, they were walking with Jesus or getting ready to walk with Jesus one time, and he says, uh, I must needs go through Samaria. And they're like, why? Why are we going through Samaria? Jews don't go through Samaria. But listen, if you're going to follow Jesus, you need to go where he goes. Okay? You need to go where he leads. And it may not always be where you think you ought to go. Okay? So we're going to begin reading in John chapter, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 14. And beginning in verse 25... Uh, we see here, the Bible says this, And in the fourth watch of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come out, down out of the boat, or out of the ship rather, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, God, we pray that you would use this message tonight to your honor and glory to encourage your, your people, Lord, to, to help them see the importance of following after you. God, I thank you that uh, even there have been times that I've gotten off the path, you've always come to find me. And I'll be ever grateful that you always come looking for me when I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Thank you for not only doing that, but for bringing me back lovingly and forgiving me and putting me back on the path and allowing me to continue to follow you. God, we love you and thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, most of all. And I pray, Lord, that even tonight, that someone would trust you as Savior. God, we ask these things in the most holy and precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, my first question to you when I'm asking you if you're walking with the Lord is, are you worried about walking on water? You know, right out the gate, we're talking about walking someplace with Jesus that probably would concern some people. So here they are, right? We know they're in the, in the, in the ship in the nighttime, and the wind is blowing, and the waves are crashing in, and they're, they're, they're terrified about what's happening. And then another thing comes along and terrifies them. They see a form uh, on the water coming to them. And they said it is a spirit. Why? Because they're thinking there ain't no man out there walking on the water. But he sure looks like one. And they said, is it a spirit? It is a spirit. And we see the, how the, the story unfolds. We see that Peter uh, eventually says, hey, Lord, if that's you, let me come. Okay? But let me ask you this question. Are you worried about walking on water? Will you stay where you are, paralyzed by fear, like the other 11? Peter, at some point, obviously had some faith, right? He says, Lord, if it's you, bid me come out on the water to you. Sometimes, folks, and, and, and Brother Buddy even mentioned it, uh, uh, I think you mentioned it tonight, maybe even last week, about how uh, at the Red Sea, they were paralyzed with fear, knowing that they couldn't go across the sea, and that Pharaoh's army was coming after them. And what happens sometimes when we get this survival mode that we're terrified, we would rather deal with something that we know to be true. And you say, well, what are you talking about, preacher? They said... We, didn't we, you know, we had places in, Israel, in Egypt. We had graves in Egypt. They, it was bad. It was bad for them, and they wanted to get out. But at least they knew what it was. They didn't know 
what was going to happen in the sea. They didn't know exactly what would happen when Pharaoh's army got there. They just wanted to go back to status quo. Have you ever been in a place or seen anybody, and, and maybe those of you who have been in uh, emergency uh, first responders, have you ever been in a place where you tried to get somebody from a place that they were in danger, but they didn't want to move? Because they were afraid if they moved, it would be worse. They were, they were terrified about where they were, but they were even more terrified about moving and worrying about what might happen to them in the process. I think we get that way sometimes. We think that uh, where we're at, God, uh, it may not be good, but at least we know what it is. But you want us to follow you? You want us to come out of that area? Oddly enough, we call it our comfort zone, even though we're really not comfortable. And we say, God, we, we're, just, we're really worried about... How many of us, being in that boat, would have asked Jesus if we could have come to Him? Or would we have stayed in the boat, terrified? Okay? Will you stay where you are, paralyzed by fear? Or will you trust the Lord's call? We see that Peter asks, he says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come out to thee on the water. And he says what? Come. He said, come. Okay, he said, yeah, there went Peter. He got out of the boat. He got out of the boat and he started walking. Isn't it incredible what can happen if we'll come at the Lord's call? Moses, the bush is talking to him. Come over here. Isn't it incredible what God can do with us if we will just go and not worry about all of the um, uh, logistics? If God's going to take us somewhere, if God's going to lead us somewhere, He takes care of all that. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. And He shall what? Direct thy paths. God takes care of that stuff. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord is what the psalmist says. So we need to just trust Him. Do you think that He knew that when Peter stepped out of the boat that Peter could walk on the water? Absolutely. Did Peter know that? He wasn't sure, but he was trusting in the Lord. Folks, there are times when things look really scary. But I want to ask you this question. How can it be scary going where the Lord is? If He says, come, we ought to jump out of the boat and run like we've never run before. Okay? But will we do that? Like Peter. But now, once we step out, will we keep our eyes on Jesus? We see here in this passage of Scripture that we've been looking at, in verse 30, <clears throat> it says here, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Now, I know that you know the next verse, has a, has a reference. It says, Immediately Jesus stretched forth His hand and caught Him and said unto Him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? We realize that Jesus was uh, kind of getting on to Him for taking His eyes off of Him after He told Him to come. But think about a little more about what Jesus said. What did He say? O thou of what? Did He say no faith? How much faith does it take to move a mountain? The size of a grain of mustard seed. It might have been little faith. Peter got out of the boat. And it might have been little faith. But when he started to sink, he said what? Lord, save me. He didn't say, throw me a life preserver. Throw me a line, guys. Why? Because those guys were so worried about themselves, they wouldn't have known what the world to do. Been nice knowing you, Peter. Yeah. But see, even a little faith can do some great things if we put that in the Lord. So are you afraid He's going to ask you to walk on the water? You know, uh, Brother Ben made that comment this morning, and it really hits close to home when he starts talking about Moses and the snake. I just, I, I'm, I'm like Moses. I'll do just like Moses. I'm going the other way. Whatever direction that snake's going, I guarantee you I'm going in the other direction. There was an old, uh, old gospel singer back in the day named Wendy Bagwell. He had a big thing called, Here Come the Rattlesnakes. And he said, uh, he was talking to a fellow after the services because they'd brought out rattlesnakes while they were singing. He's like, whoa, I don't know about that. So 
he sees these pictures of people on the wall in their caskets. And he asks him, he says, Preacher, why are there pictures of people on their wall in the caskets? He says, those are the people who took up the serpent and lost their faith. He says, well, preacher, he says, I have a feeling I'd be in that crowd right there. He says, uh, Brother Wendy, don't you believe if God told you to pick up, wouldn't you pick up the snake by the tail if God told you to? He says, yes, sir, I would. He said, but he hasn't and I ain't. Yeah. But if God said, pick it up. What did Moses, when Moses came back from where he was, however far he got, when he came back and God said, pick him up by the tail, did you see any discussion? He did it. He initially was afraid, but then he did it. He picked it up. Listen, folks, it's always going to be better to walk with Jesus than to trust what we can see and how we feel. Our heart, our feelings will deceive us. Okay? So are you worried about walking on the water? Listen, if Jesus says you can do it, you can do it. Let's go to the next one, Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, we're going to pick up in verse 31. We just have a few verses here. Verse 31, this is Jesus on his way to Calvary. Verse 31 says this, And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put, on his own raiment, or put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled him to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, the, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had t- tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and they parted my vesture, and upon my vesture they did cast lots. So we see in this passage of scripture, Jesus is on the way to Calvary and uh, to be crucified. And on his way there, they find this man named Simon of Cyrene and says, you carry his cross. And it, it sounds rather interesting when we look at the story, and, and there's a lot of ideas exactly why they picked this man out. Or some, you know, movies will depict the fact that Jesus was falling and stumbling all over the place. I don't know exactly what happened, but at that time, they compelled this man to carry the cross of Jesus Christ. And my question is, when I ask, are you walking with the Lord, is are you worried about wearying under the weight? You know, sometimes it seems like it's a burden, if you would, to walk with the Lord. When we put it in perspective to what people around us think, we don't become popular by walking with the Lord. We don't become popular in the world. We rarely become popular with our family, with our friends. They might recognize this is the way that we've chosen to go, but it doesn't always set well with them. It may not set well with our co-workers. It may not set well with anybody around us. Are we afraid that walking with the Lord is going to weary us because under the great weight? Well, first of all, I want you to understand that Jesus, even though they compelled this man to, to carry his cross, Jesus was the ultimately, ultimately the one that was crucified on that cross. But the first question is, Will you bear your cross? Really interesting thing here. For that brief time in history where Simon of Cyrene carried the cross of Jesus, do you realize that someone actually carried the cross that deserved it? Simon of Cyrene represented every single one of us because he was a sinner. And he should have bore that cross. And he did in a picture. But we see, we sing a song oftentimes called, Will Jesus Bear the Cross Alone? And uh, we think about bearing a cross in Luke chapter 14 and verse 27. The Bible basically says here that if any man won't carry his cross, he cannot be my disciple. Folks, sometimes it can get heavy following Jesus. 
but it's worth it. It is absolutely worth it. And it says, it cannot be my disciple. It didn't say he couldn't be my child. Because there's nothing that we do of our own that births us into the family of God. It is by the grace of God the moment we put our faith and trust in what Jesus did. But sometimes, after that, we may have to carry a weight. The weight of people looking down on us, people looking at us and thinking, you're crazy, you're just a Bible thumper, you're one of those Christians, you're one of those people that, that, that believe there's a God who had a son who died for everyone on the planet. Yep, I'm one of those. And if that's the cross that I have to bear, if that's the cross that Jesus says you have to bear, then I ought to bear it gladly. Because see, not only did Simon in a picture carry the cross that belonged to sinners, but he also carried the cross that our Savior was sentenced to. Will we not carry the cross every single day of our lives to show that there is a Savior who died and tasted death for every single man. Are we afraid to do that? Are we afraid to do that? Does that kind of concern us? Does that worry us? Will you carry it until death? I don't know. I'm only assuming that Simon carried it right to the, right to the hill and then let it down, and then Jesus was nailed to it. I, I don't know. But how far will we be willing? Did, was it you to say this morning that Christians don't retire? We don't. Our whole life is an opportunity to serve Jesus Christ one more day. If we live to be 100 and a day, we still got a day to serve Jesus Christ. Sometimes that's difficult for us to wrap our minds around. Are we worried about wearying under the weight? Also, will you trust Jesus with the load of your sin? A lot of times we say, preacher, you don't realize what I've done. Can I be honest with you? When it comes to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what you've done. Moses gave excuses this morning, didn't he? <laughs> ah, but you know, I, God, I can't do this, I can't do that. God does not let excuses get in the way. Because we can use all the excuses in the world as to why we will not follow him, as to why we will not trust him. And he says, my grace covers all that. It covers all of that. There's nothing for you to concern yourself with. But child of God, once we're saved, will we continue to trust Jesus every single day with the things that we do that we shouldn't do? Or will we try to carry that? Listen, if we're following around Jesus Christ, we haven't got the ability to carry around anything else, okay? Anything, anything else. So are you worried about wearing under the weight? Turn with me to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 13, we'll look at. Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 13, and we'll go through verse 18. The Bible says here, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And said unto them, he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that... Uh, ye have said to one another, as we walk, and are sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answering and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast, thou, hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? Okay? We see here that they were so covered up in what had just happened, they didn't even see the Savior walking with them. I want you to realize this is a very common practice among Christian people. Every day we get to a place, it seems, that we're going about our way and think, why has God, uh, why, why am I not hearing from God? Or, or why, why is this taking place? Why doesn't it feel like I can feel God's presence? 
Because sometimes we get so wrapped up in the things that go on around us, we forget that He's promised to never leave us nor forsake us. We see that they're walking along here, and uh, the question is here, are you worried about what's in the world? Uh, you know, um, maybe it was Andy, I, Andy Griffith, I don't know. But he said, somebody said this, uh, are you, you're being someone to give some worry, worrisome notions. Maybe that is an Andy thing, I don't know. Uh, has anybody ever given you some worrisome notions? They said some things that's like, oh, wow, I, boy, I wish I hadn't heard that. Uh, why, why are you telling me this? Why? Oh, man, now I've got that to think about. I've got that. We've got a lot of things going on around, folks. Uh, and nothing more probably than this past year in most of our lives, uh, watching the news, doing this, doing that, they have covered us up with worrisome notions. And sometimes what happens is that we get so wrapped up at what's in the world, we forget that Jesus is still with us. You know, regardless of who's the president on January 20th, Jesus is still the King of all kings. He's still the Lord of all lords. That never, ever will change. That never changed when the, uh, when the Babylonians came in. That didn't change when the Romans came in. That didn't change when the Germans came in. That didn't change ever. God is still God. And the Lord is still the King of all kings. But we get worried about what's in the world. These guys were so covered up. And it says they were what? Disciples. Right? Should they have not seen and known that was Him? If they were a follower of Jesus, you know, they should have recognized Him. But they couldn't see because of everything that was going on around them. Let me ask you this question. Like these guys, after all this had just went down in Jerusalem, will you just quit and go home? That's where these guys were headed. They were headed home. Well, Jesus was crucified. Man, all that good stuff that we were talking about with him and all that stuff that we had given up to be with him and go with him and overthrow everything, and man, now it's over. It, it, it's, it's just over. They had forgotten all about the promises that he made just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man, man be in the heart of the earth. They forgot that. They got so wrapped up in what they saw and what they heard. Has that ever happened to anybody? Yeah, sometimes we get choked out with the cares of the world. Will you let daily events consume you? It's very possible that this has happened. Verse 17, And he said unto them, Will you hear him speak? Will you hear him speak? It's hard to hear Jesus when we're trying to give our attention to everything else. Okay? We live in the information age. Man, when Alexander Graham Bell got that telephone wound up and ready to go, everybody thought, man! Of course, I think Samuel Morse had a little bit of communication going before that. But those were dots and dashes and whatever, you know. And then you could really hear people across, uh, you know, and you find out when people would talk to one another on those old phones that they'd have to scream. Why? Because they didn't know how far away they were. But nowadays, you can talk to somebody on the other side of the world, and it's like crystal clear, and it's almost like they're with you, okay? But we have so much information. We have an information overload. I'm going to tell you what. You can never get an information overload from this. Matter of fact, I think most of us have never pegged out on our gauge when it comes to all that we need to know about the Bible. Okay? So, will we hear Him when He speaks? You say, Preacher, how am I going to hear the Lord when He speaks? He speaks every time you open His book. Don't forget this book. Every single day, you need it. As so we jump down to verses 28 through 31, and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and they made, uh, he made as though he would have gone farther or further. 
And they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with him. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them, or gave to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said, Did not our hearts burn within us when he spoke? Listen, folks. We're going to leave here in a little while. I'm going to wrap this thing up before too long. And then we're going to go to our homes. What are we going to do? We're going to turn on that one-eyed monster in the living room and listen to all the garbage that it has to offer? Listen, if we would have done what we were supposed to have done a long time ago, use discernment. Can the television be a good thing? It can. But we have to decide what's God-honoring and what's not God-honoring. Can the internet be a good thing? It can. But we have to discern what's God-honoring and what's not God-honoring. We need, if we were to equally give time to studying the Word of God as we give to the television and the internet, man, we'd been here quoting that thing left and right. Left and right. The question is here, will you have him in your home? You invite everything else in the world in your home with the television and with the internet. Will you have Jesus in your home? You ever think about him sitting at your table when you're eating supper? If you ever think about him standing at your bedside at night when you sleep, watching over your family? You ever think about him being the one that you talk to when you first get up in the morning? Because really, your home ought to be his home. Right. So are you worried about what's in the world finally? Well, first of all, are you walking with the Lord? Are you worried about walking on water? Are you afraid he's going to ask you to do something you think is impossible? Secondly, are you worried about wearying under the weight? Do you think that you're going to be too oppressed by those around you in order to live a life and walk in a way that would honor God? Thirdly, are you worried about what's in the world? Have you got so much going on in your head by the stuff that's going on around us that you haven't focused on the Lord at all? Finally, are you worried about where you wind up? Okay. As you're walking with the Lord, are you worried about where you wind up? Have you ever followed a guide somewhere? <laughs> Have you ever rode a bus following a moped? through the city of Nablus, wondering if you're ever going to get to the chicken place? You said that sounds crazy. No, but there's about a half a dozen people in here that can verify that. <laughs> but the thing is, is that a lot of times we'll blindly follow somebody that says they have authority, they have knowledge, they have experience, but we have a hard time following God who knows everything. Because it just doesn't jive. You know, I've been places where if whoever was leading me would have said, bye, I'd have been stuck. I've got to tell you really quickly, and then we'll finish this. A friend of mine used to be a part of the, um, I think it was Lions Club back in Three Oaks, Michigan. And the Lions Club every year, I thought, was it the Lions Club? One of those clubs. They put on a haunted house every year. I don't do haunted houses. I just don't. Just so you know, if I'm ever in here at night and it's dark, don't sneak up on me. Because I love you and it'll break my heart what I'll do to you. But we went up there one year and uh, he was working the haunted house. And he says, hey, would you like to come in and see it? I said, there ain't no way I'm going through that thing. He said, well, I'll show you. We'll, we'll stop and you know, kind of halt everything so you can see. You know the people, some of the people are working in here. I said, I'll tell you what. You come to the front door and you lead me through these places, I'll go with you. He said, all right. So I get in the door and I get right behind him and I have a hold of him. I said, Wayne, if you leave me, I'll tear this place down getting out of here. I, I, had, I was going to fight. I, I was wholeheartedly trusting in him to take me in a place that... I was not excited about going. Why in the world 
do I have difficulty following the Lord where he tells me to go? He's got my steps ordered. He's directed my paths. He does good to me. It's all he ever has been concerned about. Are you worried about where you wind up? John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, you're familiar with it. Not many of you are. As a matter of fact, this was getting close to the walk on this earth with Jesus. Getting close to the end. And he says to his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said, Thomas, you've got to go where I go. You've got to follow me because I am the way. I am not only the guide, but I am the connection to the Father. You have to go the way that I go. So the question is, are you worried about where you wind up? First three verses pretty much ask the question, will you believe or be troubled? There's nothing worse in this life than not knowing that you know. The not knowing. Folks, there is hardly anything in this life that you can be sure of. But there's one thing you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you can't figure out a single other thing other than that, if you will trust Jesus Christ your Savior, you can know that for sure. Take it to the bank. Do whatever it says to do with all those fancy little sayings. You can count on it. Thomas says, how can we know the way? How can we know the way? He says, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? We don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? He says, I am the way. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Are you worried where you wind up? Will you go the way Jesus says to go? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Have you ever had anybody say, you need to stay on this path and don't get off of it. If you follow it right on out, it'll take you to where you want to go. I'm here to tell you there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. Today, are you going to walk with the Lord, or are you walking with the Lord? Are you worried about that He's going to ask you to do something that seems impossible? If He does, don't you think He can make it possible? Are you afraid that you're going to get weary under the weight? Don't you think that He can help bear you up? Come unto me. Take my yoke upon you, right? My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Are you worried about what's in the world? Listen, the world's going to do what the world does. We can be aware of it, but we don't need to let it dictate our lives. We need to keep focused on Jesus. And finally, are you worried about where you wind up? That should be the last thing that we have to worry about. If we know Jesus Christ is our Savior, there's no if, ands, or buts that will wind up in the presence of the Lord in heaven one day for all eternity. So let me ask you, are you walking with Him today as we prepare for an invitation? You know, our walk is our manner of life. And uh, you really can't walk with the Lord until you know that He is the way, until you believe that He is the way. You remember right at the beginning we said, Peter says, Lord, bid me to come to thee on the water. Did Peter step out of the boat before the Lord said come? He wanted to go out to the Lord, but he wasn't about to step out until the Lord told him to. Why? Because it sounds, it sounds crazy. It sounds crazy. We don't need to get ahead of the Lord, but we need to get behind Him and follow Him where He goes. And anything is possible, but we first must know Him as Savior. How are you going to walk today as we stand together? Page number three thirty.